When Lazarus left his charnel cave and home to Mary's house returned, was this demanded if he yearns to hear her weeping by his grave? Where wert thou, brother, those four days? There lives no record of reply, which telling what it is to die had surely added praise to praise. From every house the neighbours met, the streets were filled with joyful sound, a solemn gladness even crowned the purple brows of Olivet. Behold a man raised up by Christ, the rest remaineth unrevealed. He told it not, or something sealed the lips of that evangelist. Her eyes are homes of silent prayer, nor other thought her mind admits. But he was dead, and there he sits, and he that brought him back is there. Then one deep love doth supersede all other, when her ardent gaze roves from the living brother's face and rests upon the life indeed. All subtle thought, all curious fears, borne down by gladness so complete, she bows, she bathes the Saviour's feet with costly spikenard and with tears. Thrice blessed, whose lives are faithful prayers, whose loves in higher love endure. What souls possess themselves so pure, or is their blessedness like theirs? O thou that after toil and storm mayest seem to have reached a purer air, whose faith has sent her everywhere, nor cares to fix itself to form. Leave thou thy sister when she prays, her early heaven, her happy views, nor thou with shadowed hint confuse a life that leads melodious days. Her faith through form is pure as thine, her hands are quicker unto good, O oh, sacred be the flesh and blood to which she links a truth divine. See thou that countess reason ripe in holding by the law within. Thou fail not in a world of sin and even for want of such a type. My own dim life should teach me this that life shall live for evermore, else earth is darkness at the core, and dust and ashes all that is. This round of green, this orb of flame, fantastic beauty, such as lurks in some wild poet when he works without a conscience or an aim. What then were God to such as I? T'were hardly worth my while to choose of things all mortal, or to use a tattle patience ere I die. T'were best at once to sink to peace, like birds the charming serpent draws, to drop head foremost in the jaws of vacant darkness, and to cease. Yet if some voice that man could trust Should murmur from the narrow house Thy cheeks drop in, the body bows A man dies, nor is there hope in dust Might I not say, yet even here But for one hour, O oh love, I strive To keep so sweet a thing alive but I should turn mine ears and hear The moanings of the homeless sea The sound of streams that swift or slow Draw down Ionian hills and sow The dust of continents to be And love would answer with a sigh 
the sound of that forgetful shore will change my sweetness more and more, half dead to know that I shall die. O oh, me, what profits it to put an idle case? If death were seen, at first as death love had not been, or been in narrowest working shut. Mere fellowship of sluggish moods, or in his coarsest satyr's shape, had bruised the herb and crushed the grape, and basked and battened in the woods. That was poetry from the Shires. Oh.